The algorithm itself can be uh, divided into five main blocks. So we have the initial rapid evaluation where we determine whether the baby can stay with the mother or should be moved to a radiant warmer for further evaluation. Uh, the next step is assessing the airway. As we said, the uh, airway kept, kept open during the initial stage of assessment itself and we need to do whatever is needed to keep the open airway. We assess the baby's breathing and if the baby is apneic or has a sluggish respiration with bradycardia, we have to give positive pressure breathing. The breathing support can also be in the form of CPAP or supplemental oxygen if the baby is breathing but not maintaining the oxygenation. Coming to circulation, if this severe bradycardia persists despite the assisted ventilation, circulation is supported by performing chest compression and this should be coordinated with PPV. And if there is no uh, response to these, then we may need drugs. And mainly it's epinephrine and volume, which we will be discussing later. So this is the run through of the algorithm. I uh, mentioned the initial questions when I told about the update. So we have the uh, questions of uh, whether it's uh, clear liker, whether there is a term or premature baby, any other risk factors where we get all the details and the plan for cot lamping. After the baby is born, we have to, uh, I mean, start the initial uh, assessment steps. So we have a team briefing beforehand, if possible, we review the antenatal counseling, risk factors and so on. And we check the equipment. It's very important to be prepared. Uh, you can review the previous uh, series for equipment check. Nothing much has changed in that. So at the time of birth, we assess the baby for term gestation to confirm whether uh, the dates were wrong. You might have a premature baby by mistake. Uh, you may have good tone and whether the baby is breathing or crying. Uh, if the answers to these is yes, then the baby can stay with the mother for the initial steps, routine care and ongoing evaluation. So obviously most of us are going for BFHA and skin to skin care becomes important at this stage. The labor room temperature should be maintained throughout this period so the baby doesn't get cold. If any of the responses is no, we have to warm, dry, stimulate, position the airway and suction if needed. Uh, if the baby is apneic or gasping and the heart rate is less than 100 uh, or the heart rate is less than 100, then you need to start IPPV. As we mentioned in this algorithm, you consider the cardiac monitor the moment the baby needs PPV. Pulse oximeter, of course, is part of this. If uh, the answer to this is no, then you may consider uh, CPAP, uh, suctioning, positioning and free flow oxygen. So any of these as suits. If it's a premature baby with labored breathing, you would consider CPAP more. If the heart rate is less than 100, despite effective IPPV, uh, then you ensure adequate ventilation. The Mr. Sopa steps can be done. You consider endotracheal tube or laryngeal mask, uh, cardiac monitor if you have not done that already. And uh, if the heart rate is uh, less than 60 at this stage, then you would start uh, chest compression as well. So if you have not already intubated, or you don't have the alternative airway if you're not able to intubate laryngeal mask is an option. So you consider this definitely at this stage. Uh, if you can't intubate or intubation fails, you don't need to panic. You continue the same steps with uh, effective mask uh, intubation, uh, mask application. You may have two people to hold. LMA is a blessing and uh, make sure the LMA is available in these scenarios and your team is trained to use it. 100% uh, oxygen is important once you go to the chest compression stage. We have to prepare and insert the UVC because the next step would be the IV medication. So if the heart rate is less than 60, epinephrine every three to five minutes in cycle. So the first dose can be given endotracheal and subsequently it's given through the UVC. Uh, if you manage a UVC, if not uh, intraosseous route is applied. We have the target oxygen saturation table. So you don't expect the oxygenation to improve immediately. The baby, if the fetus is coming from a hypoxic environment, so at birth it's 60 to 65, at, uh, up to one minute. At two minutes, you expect 65 to 70, three minutes, 70 to 75, four minutes, 75 to 80. And remember that it takes around five minutes to reach 80%. So you don't need to rush to increase the FiO2 if the baby saturation is picking up slowly. You can wait provided the rest of the parameters are stable. And at 10 minutes, you reach 85 to 95%. The initial oxygen concentration for PPV, if the baby is uh, 35 weeks and above, you start with room air. And if the baby is less than 35 weeks, you start with 21 to 30%. There is an option for the babies who are less than 28 weeks to go for 40% and then.